yo 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 um so yeah welcome uh, back to uh, another lesson i would say um so basically this game uh playing against uh Orn against aatrox jungle kha'zix against graves who's my mid lane even oh rise against victor and bot lane is a ranged matchup against a melee matchup so in this game i know that my bot lane needs resources because in order for Seth to win the laning phase, he needs to go in, he needs to flash in. And every time he flashes in, basically I just want to be as fast as possible there, if I could be. Even though I'm Kha'Zix, because high likely, my laners are going to be winning 2v2, so I want to be at least be matching Graves, right? So, yeah, basically, I'm going to be focused around bot and mid a lot after 6. And pre-6, mostly look to cover bot lane. Top player should be chilling, and uh, let's play. Okay, I'll skip a bit faster. Okay, so basically right now I'm uh, gonna start top. But currently I see a fight, so I'm just leaning a little bit. So basically right here, I'll just put sound a little bit on. Uh, basically right here I pinged my um, Samira, to, I mean not my Samira, my Seraphine to put a ward just now. Because I want him to be able to see the graves. Because why would Sami uh, so why did I say Samira? Why would Seraphine save his ward when if he would ward right now, then he would instantly see the graves instead of like right here? Because if Seraphine would go back to landing phase and put a ward like let's say right here, then maybe graves can jump around through the tri bush and gank them, right? Whereas like if a graves doesn't show on his camp, that means for sure that after three camps he's cheesing somewhere or um, he's basically taking his wolves or something, right? But at least they're aware of like exactly where he is. So basically, as you can see, <laughs> enemy bot lane is getting really low HP, and obviously while I'm farming, I see all of this. Like right now, I'm just turbo chilling. I'm looking at every single lane, and I see that bot lane is really low HP. So I see, when I see this, for me this means that I want to be able to be as soon as possible bot lane and make sure that my laners don't get punished by <laughs> winning lane phase, right? Because when laners complain about um, I'm winning lane but my jungle is not doing anything, in this case it's really true because in this case you just have to for example right here i think people would usually take their wolves and then go towards bot side because like basically like ah oh, i'm gonna take my camps and then i'll see what happens but in this case the situation changes because if there would be nothing happening around bot then it's okay to take your wolves because then it's basically you're playing a current winning condition but currently bolin is your winning condition conditions since they're like hard winning bolin obviously so yeah, let's play Oh, you will not take your wolves either if enemy has volume priority or mid lane priority and graves can invade you on your red buff because graves could take three camps invade your red buff and you get fucked as well but in this case i have mid uh, bot priority and uh, mid can always follow so i'll be fine so right here i see graves level 2 and i can see that he took two camps so i know that actually he'll be as well level um, i mean he's taking grump i think okay he'll be level 3 after grump so right now like i said I want to make sure that I can match his graves. So right now I know that after Gromp, he's gonna look to uh, go towards bot side. And I'll see him doing so as well. So right now he's gonna go from behind here. And I know he's gonna gank and I want my bot lane to play like this which is really good because I know for sure he's looking for a gank. Okay, so this is like, how do you go for a gank? This is important for laners and uh, junglers. Like basically I want them to go as deep as possible because the further they are, the harder it is for them to survive. Because let's say um, right now I would run, run in a straight line like right here and they see me, they would instantly start running away like straight to the tower and they might survive. Or the set might run back in the river and be fine. But uh, look what I'm doing. So basically I'm going a little bit to the side hoping that they commit a bit further because obviously they're going for this gank thinking this will work out. So I'm just trying to make sure that they walk a bit further than, uh, than they should. So as you can see, I was standing even a bit still because I know the range of the um, vision. So around now, he sees me. So now he's like, oh fuck, I need to run away. But now it's too late because he's already too deep. And now at this point, like basically, he has no flash as well and he has to run further than he originally would have. So at this point, he's dead. Okay, let's go back one time. 
Now I'll show you what would have happened if I just instantly went towards them. So imagine right now I'm not moving to the side. I'm right now running straight into them. Oh, uh, one thing that's important as well. Um, if my laners don't die, let's say um, I'm already showing right. It's better as laners to like walk up in their faces and like make sure they hit you. Because the thing is that if I'm coming to kill them obviously, they need to run away. And if they're gonna hit the Seraphine while running away, it means that they're gonna take more damage. Whereas Seraphine has flash and he can easily take like a full combo of them and flash out, worst case. But he probably won't even have to because the moment they see me, they will start running and not even hit back. Because if they hit back then basically it's uh, game over for them. But um, what I want to mention is like, imagine right here, I went straight towards the set right here. And he sees me. So right now, he would probably already be seeing me if I went like straight in line here. Then the set would instantly recognize it and go back in this line here. And what would happen is he would be fine and Graves has flash and he has E as well. Then basically nothing would happen. Unless maybe my Ash as well steps up and hits them in their face and takes some damage and then um, basically chase them down, right? And force them to hit us so they're unable to run. But these are small things that you as a laner and drone have to identify and just how to play out play it out the best way because when even in challenge I see a lot of people like for example the Seraphine right let's say he cannot die at all and I'm coming this Seraphine would usually like keep max range like this and let's say the enemy is running away then there's more distance between Seraphine and Graves which is not good since basically they should be running and we are the chasers so it's kind of to give you an idea how a gank works and how you laner should play and how Jung should play. So yeah, obviously I'm getting a kill here, which is really nice. So at this point, basically, uh, Graves is kind of fucked because as Kha'Zix, if I can get an early game kill and I can keep farming to level 6, looking at enemy champions, they will not survive because they're all squishy and basically I have a lot of setup. I have Ash. I have Rice, I have Seraphine, like all of these CC is like a lot. So right now I'm just like checking what I can do here. So uh, I mean obviously Seth is coming from base so I'm piecing out here. But uh, my Rice wants to fight here which I didn't really like. I think I pinged him back. Like now I'm pinging him back. But this guy I think does not keep in mind that our bowling is in base here and that Seth is coming. <clears throat> so right now he goes through this fight and I'm a Mr. Nice guy so I'm like uh, okay I'll just uh, let my rice die and take the blue and I'm out like see you <laughs> I mean I was thinking maybe I go for this kill but even if I trade a kill here uh, let's say I could kill him right it's still not worth it because as Kha'Zix like you really need to keep farming and like it's really important to not die and trade kills because especially as Kha'Zix the thing is if I die I lose farm time and while I'm losing farm basically enemy laners keep getting stronger which you don't want to happen, obviously, right? So, oh, then an, an Atrox TP'd here, and uh, I uh, cringed it slightly. I uh, I died. <laughs> and right here, the moment I get hit by this, I think I should have just flashed like right here. But I flashed a bit too late, and I got pulled back. And that's uh, yeah, a tragic a tragic death. But anyway, like right now at this point, uh, I'll play a bit further. So basically when I'm dead, I'm chilling in base. All they should be doing as a drone is this. Look at your lanes a bit. Like which lanes are vulnerable and which lanes are fine. And as a laner, what you should think about is like, what's my jungle gonna do? So basically you can see that all my camps are up and obviously I would like to play for bot lane, bot lane right? So as a jungler, if you know from base already you wanna play for bot, then you should identify like, okay, what, if I wanna play bot then going to my golems doesn't make much sense because Imagine after golems, right? I see a potentially, potentially a kill on them, and I go bot lane and I try to kill them. And uh, let's say I killed them or I didn't kill them. What would happen is I would lose my top side camps because uh, basically, ob obviously, I'm showing, and that would not be good at all. So what you want to be doing is you want to go top to bot. And what you want to do is well, like you want to make sure that you can at least take these two camps, Gromp and Wolves, because after you secure those two camps. You can even look for mid lane or bot lane gank because you will not lose your bot side camps. Because you're on the same side and there's no way that Graves is going to invade you when you're just ganked like let's say bot or mid and you have lane priority, right? And of obviously as well it's easier for you to access your bot side camps. So it will be really really risky for Graves to uh, 
uh, move towards my bot side camps as well. So I see Grace right here going for um, the bot scroll, roll, high likely. Oh, this Victor has no flash, so currently th he's dead. Okay, um, there's one thing as well about ganks in general, what laners and drones should know is like, laners will always step up for CS. So, the thing is as well, let's say Ryze had no CC, right? Let's say he didn't have flash and no CC. Um, it's good if my laners stand like a little bit more back because then Victor would feel safe and as a general you can even stand right here and he won't see you. Because as long as the minions are not like in this line, uh, basically he won't see you. So basically if Victor steps or stays here, like and I show first and the moment I show, Ryze is gonna go then, is the best timing. But right now this is like the most easy kill since my uh, Ryze has flash and he doesn't and he doesn't have cleanse so obviously he's gonna die here. But the thing is as well, um, this guy, I mean right now he dies right? But I'll show you another thing what could have happened. Okay. So imagine right here this minion was not low HP right? Let's say this minion was full HP. There's no reason for Victor to be here at all. He could be chilling like right here and be waiting till the minion is lower HP. So laners will always go for minions lower HP and they're actually focusing on the minion. They're actually like just zooming in on the minion. That's what I noticed. Even the changer. Like a lot of people are like looking at this money, at this gold, and they're like, oh, let's get that gold. And the thing is, they don't look at minimum anymore then. They are legit dizzy for like at least one second or even, even the best players are dizzy for like an 0 0.2, 0 0.5 seconds. Like they see me a bit late, right? So if they will be, let's say this minion was full HP, he will be standing here. He will be looking at minimap because literally like he doesn't have to focus on last thing. So he's chilling. But right now look at this Victor. He's like sweating for his minion a bit. But now he sees Ryze stepping up. So obviously he's gonna uh, run away, you know. But like I said, imagine Ryze. Imagine Ryze did not have um, flash. Then it's the best for me to be going first because I as well have a slow uh, and I can slow him a bit. Then it would be better if he's as far as possible again and so he has like more distance to run towards his tower. Because like I said, if Ryze no flash, if he starts running like this and I'm going for a gank, then he's basically fine. But imagine I went first and this Victor is still right here at the mouse. Then what would happen is basically he would get really hard chunked in the first place, he would get slowed and then basically has a lower distance to run towards his tower. So that's why as a laner you have to like be able to play it well as well according to your champions and CC. And these things are really lacking as a laner. I would say even junglers are not aware of like the timing. So like if laners could like work on these things it would be nice for a jungler and vice versa obviously. So yeah. Okay so basically right now. Oh. Um, there's one thing I forgot to mention as well, which is really, really important as well. So as a laner, right? Uh, sorry for this, but... Uh, so let's say after I die here... Oppa, I'm dead. So as a laner, what you have to identify as well, like... Um, laners are always asking for resources from a jungler, but they don't realize that junglers sometimes have to farm as well, right? So if... Um, let's say I'm playing bot lane, right? And... The wave is like right here. What you want to be doing is like obviously be slow pushing bot lane as much as you can since basically you will know that your Kha'Zix should be basically taking your topside camps. So basically I will not be at bot lane. So if I'm playing bot lane right here and I don't know for whatever reason you decide like just hard push this wave and upcoming wave. And then like the enemy freezes the wave right here. And then you're starting to spam in your jungler help help help. Like the thing is you as a laner as well can identify like um, how much time you have which means that basically um, right here you should know that I'm gonna take at least two camps on top side and then I'm available to help you wait my I'm getting invaded by my mother oh. um, okay so basically right here if I'm bowling with slow push as much as they can I would take two camps after that, like I know with the next wave that's coming already, I can move with my rise to side lane because this Victor. Let's say I, I wouldn't kill this Victor, right? I could even dive bot lane potentially with a really, really huge wave. And there's so many options you can think of, but um, I guess later you need to be able to identify as well, like okay, how should I play my wave according to my jungler pathing? 
and it would it would be the same for top lane. Like my top lane, let's say, let's say um, since I'm pathing up, I can easily help him, right? But imagine I have to path down, then it would be a bit tragic for him to put waves in this situation because it wouldn't be good for me, right? Okay, so right now I see Graves on bot side. Okay, so right now, when I'm top side and my and Graves bot side, this is called kind of split the map. And here, what I want is my bot lane to push as fast as possible this wave. Like right now, I do not want my bot lane to slow push this with the next one because what's happening is that I'm currently around the top side and Graves bot side. So what's happening is that Graves can like potentially look for a bot lane gank and my bot lane wave is bad, so they need to fix this wave as soon as possible. If you're playing a laner, you need to identify that your jungle is not there. You see the Graves basically in your on your side as an Ash. So you need to fix this as soon as possible so the wave bounces and that you don't need resources from your jungler. Because what happens really often is that I need to waste my time helping my laners where basically I shouldn't have if they uh, read the situation better. But here, um, I believe I'm gonna go back towards bot side because I do not want my Graves, I mean sorry, my Graves. I do not want the uh, Graves to stick into my bot side because bot lane is my winning condition. I don't want him to deny my bot lane snowballing. So I'm gonna run through mid lane, look for a gank, chunk him, and move together with Rice towards bot side. That's what I think I did. I'm not sure. Okay, so right here is the same stuff. Oh, one thing so as laner. Like here, what you're doing as Rice is really bad. Because if you're playing like mid lane, what you should do is like, you should always hook the opposite side. Because this way, if you're standing here, obviously Victor, if he sees me coming from here and Rice there, like obviously he will just run towards the bot side easily. Whereas if Rice, like let's say standing here, like most mid laners have the habit of or tendency to like go on the opposite side because they feel safer this way. If they're a good mid laner, they will not. But a lot of bad mid laners, if you stand here, where I'm pointing my mouse, they will always usually often go to the opposite side, which is my side. So now Victor actually doesn't have anywhere to go if he comes to my side. Because r right here, right? Imagine Victor plays it well, he can easily run out to the bot side. If he sees me. Okay, but the thing is, this Victor is like, <laughs> is deciding to step up, which is not so smart, you know? But imagine like he respects me, knows my position, he would never die, basically. I'm not sure if he dies, but... Okay, he doesn't die. But basically the same thing that I mentioned, that he can easily run to the bot side and basically we can't chase him. Okay, here I see that my support's moving first. But it still seems quite difficult to go for this. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna look to get my 6 as soon as possible basically. But yeah, as you see, like, I make sure that Graves cannot really fuck my bot lane up, you know? I want to make sure that I'm around to help him if needed. And here I'm pinging, like, in case that Graves is there, I'm like running, even if I camp to take. And Graves is there. Graves could have been in this bush, and I'm just making sure that I'm ready to help my bot lane if they need me. And always be aware, and as a laner as well, you should always be thinking like, okay, like, my wave is like this, I don't have any wards, uh, maybe I should ward or put a hawk shot because you don't really want to make your journey like, I don't know, just go behind you for fun and, you know, just waste time kinda, you know? It's, yeah, it's, it's not that good. But yeah, as you can see, like, obviously, because the wave like this, like, you're gankable and as a laner, you should be aware of it as well and do the things that's uh, needed in order to uh, be fine. Okay, so another kill I received. And one more thing, obviously, like when I'm playing bot side the whole game. Oh, it's sort of killing him, let's go. Okay, here I'm just taking the Drake fast. I'll just play a bit faster. So basically, right now, I'll just pause real quick. I know that my Ash is hitting 6 win. Um I'm hitting 6 win as well, I believe. Let's look at my XP bar. Okay, uh, it's, it's a bit far away from 6, but uh, soon, soon. But basically right now, again, I'm coming from base, right? And I have to go towards top side, so... My bowling should think, like, okay, how do I play without resources at the moment? Like, the only thing that can happen to them is maybe potentially getting dove. But if my mid lane can push the mid wave and just f fog towards the bot side, it can never happen. 
So I can just take my top set camps in peace and uh, get 6. So I think what I'm doing here is like I was trying to look for a gank because he had no flash. But it's too overforced. So this is not good at all since I showed my position I believe. Did they have a ward on me? Um, I don't think they saw me. Okay, they see me now. But regardless, like, my win condition should be mainly getting 6 and my orn is fine, right? And if I get 6, like, I'll just kill all of them, literally. So right now, Grace is moving towards the bot side, so... In this case, it's really good when Bolling can just, like, push fast the wave and then just go into my bot side, because right now he could flip the invade with Set as well moving there. Okay, he's not, but he could have been if he wanted to. Okay, so right now as jungler, I can see that uh, bullying is bad, and I already know that right now, like, my bullying needs help, like, the next wave for sure. Or maybe even this wave, depends on how fast they push it. But the best for them is to, like, slow push it, because let's say they hard push it, right? Then the timing is off, because I can't move together with them to take everything back. Whereas if I would take my Raptors and Red Buff and then move with bot lane, I can use this wave and upcoming wave to move into mid lane and take full control or even fight enemy jungler because they will be hard stuck in the tower. So I need two more camps for level 6. But right now bot lane is fine since I use Hawkshot. So I'll just go towards my golems and get 6 as soon as possible. And with this, I can like move together as well with my bot lane to just look for anything basically here because the enemy has to catch the wave. Okay, this information gray is showing top side gives me the info that my Ryze can play like a psychopath on mid lane, push the wave, and I can easily dive them on bot lane. On this wave that's coming, or even this one, I can easily kill them here because gray showed top side. So basically, my orange has to chill, and I think he should be fine. Yeah, basically, um, they're dying. Goodbye, Tim. And look, more Orn is smurfing. Woo. Okay, let's see what happened in the top lane, because I actually didn't see it. Oh my god, that's tragic. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, right now I'm uh, 4 kills. And um, basically... Uh, let's see. Basically, the next objective that you have to think about is basically who's like really strong in your team, like identifying like who's your win condition. And to me, Rice and me are completely beasts. So basically, I'm gonna play with Rice. And if you're a laner, like please <laughs> press tap as well. Like Luke will carry the game and play accordingly to your win condition. Because right now, like honestly, if you're playing, let's say Orange for example, right? Uh, you know that honestly, you're not gonna get much resources since bull lane plus mid lane is really strong. So what this orange should be doing is just making sure he catches the wave, uh, make sure that the wave is like even, there's no not slow push towards the enemy, and uh, just fix the wave as soon as possible if he can, so he's not vulnerable to ganks. And like bull lane can so identify that I'm probably going through mid lane, right? So if I'm going through mid lane, that means that two v two we're gonna win guaranteed. So the only place that Graves can potentially make is um, with um, Set, like trying to gank bot lane. So if you're playing side lane at this point and you press tap, you can know as well that basically <laughs> you're chilling, you know, and you should wait for your jungler, jungler mid, and just wait to get carried. Okay, so right now basically uh, I see them popping a herald and uh, it seems illegal in my book. So I'm just uh, stealth into them. And they're dead. So I just got uh, a double kill. And basically I see as well that... Uh, okay, basically right here, right? Um, if you're playing bot lane... Okay, this is basically their vision. Okay, wait, what's their vision? Fuck. Okay, this is their vision, I believe. So basically right here, you see that I popped the plant. Um, you are... Basically only two men, and your Graves is dead. What you want to do is never trade in if you have no jungler and any jungler is on your side. <laughs> like basically what they should be doing, if anything, is like not fight here, because I'm coming obviously, and I'm just coming for some free kills. Like I just press W and I'm out. 
instead, what you should have done, like the moment this happened on mid lane as bot lane, like the moment you see your mid laner and Jonah getting bobbied, like here, you want to get get out fast. Like, what you want to be doing is take this next wave, like that's coming, as soon as possible, as much as you can, and after that, you just want to make sure you run out and you just have to wait for the next wave because this wave is lost. So here, like I said, like you can only maybe like clear this minion uh, and not do this and then get out because basically I'm coming. I'm like right here chilling. So if they would have taken like maximum, only this minion, even this minion is maybe a bit greedy because that one minion is not worth to potentially die, you know, and they need to just run away as soon as possible. And then I would not be able to kill them at all because they will be two together and my bot is still kind of stuck here. And then they would have to wait for like this wave that's coming and walk together with the wave and then Graves can shadow them and then they're able to go back in the tower and then they would be fine. And these players are actually not stupid, obviously, I mean, maybe they're not folks, but this is for example uh, Vulcan and this is um, Jankos. But obviously it's totally right and people sometimes get dizzy and not focus, which happens a lot, but it's just uh, these things uh, you need to be able to identify early and I mean it's just a good thing you know to <laughs> know those things okay here I uh, I survived somehow it's a it's a sprint <laughs> yep it's an interesting uh, battle. Okay, so basically right here, um, as laner and jungler, you always have to identify like what which objective you want to play for. Like right here, basically bot tower is down. Obviously, um, since their bot lane is bot lane, they want to play for bot tower. So you already know what enemy is playing for. So then you can make a plan. Okay, how do I want to play in order for us to like maintain the biggest lead, which is um, the Orn can easily go bot. And oh, I didn't take the Drake yet, so before we swap, we should take the Drake. But imagine Orn would go bot and defend. This guy will never die, my Orn, because he has uh, Sunfire, or like, not Sunfire, but he has a lot of armor. And basically, Orn is chilling, meanwhile, Ash can easily go for top and take the tower there. And since we have mid priority as well, as a rise, what you have to identify is that okay, uh, they want to play for bot, so I just want to push mid and hover towards <coughs> bot side. Because if Seth shows bot side, you want to kind of distribute the numbers equally, so you get the maximum out of it. But right now uh, we're not doing it because uh, it's Soliki obviously as well. But it will it will be the best. I mean, right now, for example, um, Rice, if you can take the next wave, we take this next uh, mid wave as well. We could use on Ash and Seraphine this top wave that's coming, and then Orn can just recall and. Actually, he can even stay with us because he has so much time if Ryze pushes this wave. Then we can just go together and clap this top tower. And then Ryze can just cover the next mid wave. And then this way you'll be able to take the objectives quite quite well. So right now, for example, um, instead of hitting this, what we could have done is like, Ash, Seraphine, just go instantly in top lane. Uh, make sure that we protect the wave. Uh, Ryze can go mid lane here. He can easily get the purity alone, like 1v3, like literally. And then Orn, like, he can stay around if no one of them is fixing this wave. And he can, like, lay the recall. Actually, he should recall, like, after clearing this wave. Because then Victor might push this next wave. And then he can clear it. And that way, you have the perfect lane assignment in order to play for the objective. And denying the enemy win condition as well. Okay, right here is a fist fight. Yeah, those things that I just explained is maybe a little bit uh, <laughs> too extreme in low elo because you have to really micromanage them in order in order for that to happen. And even then, it might not work. But it's still a good thing to know because as a laner, you need to know what you're playing for. Oh shit, I'm trolling. I'm dying. But yeah, basically as a laner, you need to identify what you're playing for and how you're playing for it, and just kind of see what's going to happen in the next minute, right? You can already. I can of see what's gonna happen. Okay, so basically right here, let's see, I'm dead right now, the Herald is up. So basically here you just want to play for the Herald here. And if my laners are taking this tower, they need to um, 
base as soon as possible. My own is chilling. Yeah, you should always have the weak side, which is like Orn, towards the object that they want to be playing for. I not necessarily what they want to be playing for, but uh, basically you want your strong side on the objective side, which is like the Herald and top tower, and your weak side on bot. And if your Orn needs resources, you should get million priority and just lean a little bit towards bot side, so they will not hit bot tower. And then you can keep playing for top side. But that's like in the best case scenario, but... In challenger games, this might happen sometimes if you ping and people understand. But in the low elo, this will, this is not possible. <laughs> but maybe if you're playing clash or something, then this information is useful for you. Maybe there will be an example where I can explain it. Okay, but I'll just play it a bit faster. Okay, so right now, basically, what's happening is that um, obviously no one is showing on side lanes, and Basically they can all be chilling there, right? Which I actually saw. So right now this mid wave is kind of pointless to contest. Like this wave, what you should be thinking as laner is like, okay, my job is to wave clear, not fight, and just wait till Ash pushes out the next wave. And here I'm pinging to push top tower because here I don't want to fight. I want to push the top wave in order for the enemy to catch the wave so we can get man advantage and then we can like do whatever we want. And if they decide to stay middle in all, then they're just gonna lose top waves. And as laner you can identify as well like what you want to be doing in every situation basically. So right now, for example, I think stepping up a little bit like this, it could be a bit risky if Seth has flash up and decides to just flash in and, I don't know, insect him. But right now, as you see, this Victor is trying to go top lane, but I'm trying to um, zone him a bit. I'm just scaring him. Or like, I tried to go on him basically. <laughs> I mean... This is not optimal that they're chilling here because basically I want to play for Herald and Top Tower. There's no reason for them to be here at all. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, goodbye. Okay, well, basically I'm taking Herald. I'll just skip a bit faster. Okay, so it seems like I'm going for a top end kill. Okay, I think I cringed it here. I should have went from behind and he was dead. I remember this. But it doesn't matter. Take him out. I mean, this is probably the most difficult part for the most people, especially for laners and junglers. Like, in this case... Okay, so right now the drake's coming up, right? I believe. Uh, where do I see it? Okay, the drake's coming up within the next... Okay, 50 seconds. I pinged it in chat. So basically right here, okay, from my point of view, basically my laners are currently in base. Wait, let's go back, uh, more back, what, I, what I'm seeing. So basically Ezreal's alive, my Ash has a little bit delayed base. So that means for sure that Ezreal is faster on mid lane. So I know that, okay, my Rice just killed enemy grave, so it doesn't count. But basically if my Rice is the same base as well, or not here, then Ezreal could push this wave and be chilling in my bot side and one of us would have to catch the wave here that means that I should be really careful going through my jungle here because I wouldn't have any vision and one of my teammates would be catching the mid wave right here and you basically want to move together to regain control which will be through mid lane so you don't get caught and I made this mistake a lot in the past as well when it was uh, a newbie or even like not even a noob, like even diamond, you know, like even changer, you make this mistake sometimes if you're not focused. But in low elo, this will happen like constantly. Oh, there's an arrow flying. Okay, so basically right here we're taking Drake. And now the question is like, after Drake, what else do you play for next? Because the things that people don't really think about is like, basically once all the tier 1 towers are down, people just want to fight and don't realize that you want to play with man advantage, right? And the question is, how do you play with man advantage? It's like, obviously all of your laners, you need to identify like, which laner is the strongest and which laner does my jungler want to play around. And once you have identified that, which is like, obviously I'm playing with whoever's mid lane and rice, uh, that basically uh, the, the lane I'm around, the other laners have to play safe, right? So basically, my Orn is kind of on chilling mode and Okay, unless we're looking for a pick, which I think we are. 
Unless enemy entered, then you should just kill them. Okay, so it's uh it's getting time. Okay, so we killed him. No need to play for objection solo queue. But in general, like maybe we'll find a better example because it's easier to show like a case. <laughs> But okay, right now I want to play for the Nesher basically and you should always think like okay what's the best way to play for Nesher because what usually people do is like they see Nesh and they just go for it which I think in this case let's see they have Orn teleport okay we, do. we actually can go for the Nesh since Orn can just teleport here and they have no smite and we're so much stronger oh but there's a fight happening on mid lane there's a uh, oh what the fuck they looked so bugged So that guy dies. Seems like we're going for the Nash anyway. Which is maybe a little bit flippy. But I guess it's possible if I try to zone him a bit. Because right here they have no vision basically. Because basically I think I swept everything and this is their vision at the moment. So it's like really black for them and then basically I'm just harassing them here. Like right now they're like shitting their pants low key. Okay, what's, what's happening here? Are we flipping it? No, we're not flipping it. Okay, we did not flip it and I didn't have jump. Because things here, if you're ahead, the last thing you want to do is like a 50-50. Like there, it's just better to like either kill them or just back with tempo. Because, like I said, not sure it was the greatest call. Let's see what's happening here. Wow, taken out. But that looked so bug though. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, it's just a visual bug. But basically, if you're ahead, don't flip it like that. So I'll give you another example what <laughs> I think should have happened, in my opinion. So basically, right here, obviously, since we killed the Aatrox and Grace is alive now, then. It's not as good to do Nash anymore because now that smite, now they have smite. But imagine right here, um, instead of like trying to kill the Ezreal, he just took this wave and went towards Nash or TP. There's no way ever they can steal this Nash because Graves is dead. But right here, because we killed him, obviously, now Graves is up. And now what we should have done, if we're not sure about Nash at least, is just like just base right here in Fog. And then just come from base, push out the next mid that's coming, get full control, do the same, and an enemy will have to face check and we'll have Orn ulti to go on them as well and they have no flashes basically right so then after we kill him one more time then we can do this again but right now since obviously Graves up and he's able to enter here then it's not possible you can only do this if someone of your team can zone the Graves from smiting then you can do this but if there's no one then it's just not possible but it was good what they did though I mean if I jump like this cooldown, then I would actually maybe get this, you know, but sadly I didn't have a jump. So that blows. But yeah, I mean, that's just the most part, I would say, of... Um, I mean, I, I, I can just play like a bit further and explain. I'll just finish the game. Okay, so basically right here, all of us died, obviously, and we're playing for mid tower, and... What would usually happen is, people see one guy and they are gonna run at the guy, they're just gonna try to fight him. But instead, what you can do and think is... Okay. I'll just wait till I'm back up. <coughs> okay, so right now. The things, I think at this point already, I can identify that obviously since my... Ash is dead, Ezreal for sure is able to take the next wave that's coming. So I know that Ezreal, after his next mid wave that he takes, he's able to rotate the top lane and one of us has to catch mid lane. So I know that his only play as a team is to get top tower and kill my Ryze potentially, right? So you as a Ryze or Ash or like wherever you're playing, you can identify like, hey, like, care top. 
Basically, you know that they can't go bot. There's nothing to play for. There's no bot tower. There's no mid tower. There's only a top tower. So after they push mid lane, obviously they're gonna go to top lane. And right here, they will kill my top lane if my rice stays top lane. So as every single lane, you can identify wh which lane he's going to potentially. Okay, so right here, we're playing for the Drake here. But basically, if you're playing for the Drake here, obviously we're not going to be contesting. I mean, if no one shows here on this wave, we can take the wave. But if someone of them shows here, then we wouldn't be contesting it. But since Victor shows bot lane as well, it's okay. Because right now, my Rise is basing and Aatrox is free to move and we would have to be slightly more careful. Okay, but right here, since we have tempo, uh, good luck to the enemy team. But the Drake is coming up in how many seconds? I mean, soon, but we would need one more wave, obviously. And since Victor is showing bot, we should try to look for a fight here. I got a little bit poked, but that guy got poked as well. Okay, getting some healings. Seems like we're just gonna murder them. Wait, my music stopped for some reason. Let me put it back on. Okay, so basically here we take Drake and what else up here? Oops, not X. Oh. Ah, doesn't matter. So basically we're gonna be playing for the mid tower here. Oh, what the fuck happened here? Oh yeah, I mean basically I saw Graves trying to uh, poke me here. And then he just got exploded. <laughs> Yank was taken out. Ah, uh, basically it's just staying on the side to threaten him. So he can't step up. Ah, uh, this game is pretty over, but I think I went through the majority of the things that laners and Germans should be aware of basically and I mean, there's of course like some more things about ganks, but I can't explain this all in one video because there's a lot more things to it. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's about it and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye swimmers. And if you play laner, make sure you do the things I told you and just be aware of your jungle pathing and try to play accordingly and try to understand how to play with your jungler a bit because a bit, I think there's not many videos like actually like what you should be thinking as a laner and so you actually think about your jungler right because I'm a jungle main so it's really easy for me to recognize what you as a laner should do and what you shouldn't do but it would be nice if laners are able to identify as well some things which I'm telling you guys <laughs> but anyway uh, yo peace